Hey everybody, how's it going and welcome back to Electric is Better. In today's video, we are going to be installing a nuclear 24F controller on our Suron. We've been making videos on the stock Suron for about two and a half years now and the reason for that is that I just wanted to show people what you could get out of the stock battery and controller, which is more than enough. The stock Suron has been the best bike I've ever owned. But since I've thrown almost every single upgrade that you can on the bike, I think it's time to start upgrading the battery and the controller. And we're going to start off with the controller. Like I said, this is a nuclear 24F controller that I got from Suron Shop. This video is not sponsored in any way, by the way, guys, but I gotta give a shout out to Suron Shop. They helped me pick out the controller that they thought would be best for me and my riding style, which was awesome. And then when I got the controller and was installing it, and maybe I ran into a hiccup, they were there every single time and they walked me through the whole thing. So A plus on Suron Shop. I'll put their link down in the description. They have a whole bunch of cool stuff on their website. They have bigger tires, bigger batteries, bigger controllers. All right, let's get back to the video. So the first thing I did with the controller before I even put it on the bike is I looked down at the bottom of the controller where the wires go actually into the controller. There's a little rubber piece that's supposed to keep mud and debris out. Actually, what I ended up doing was hot gluing around that and made sure that it was pretty water sealed tight. The controller is supposed to be waterproof, but I'm pretty cautious, so you guys don't have to do this, but this is just what I personally did. Just took hot glue and went in and out of the wires, just making sure no water could get in. I also hot glued a little bit on the wires on the communication cable for the motor. And after that all dried up, we went out to the shop and started mounting it. Sorry for the change in scenery, guys. My video recorder apparently died while I was taking off my X controller, so I took this uh, video for from LunaCycle's website. This is them unhooking the stock surround controller. It's pretty simple to get your controller off the bike and free. All you're gonna do is unscrew the bash plate at the four bolts holding it in place. Next up, there's a little plastic guard right underneath your controller that you're gonna wanna unscrew. There's one Allen screw on each side, and then there's also two Phillips head screws screwed in through the controller right at the base of your controller. You're gonna wanna take all those out, and the plastic piece should just come right out. All right, guys, next up, there are two Allen keys that go into the side of your controller, and then there's two more Allen screws at the top that you're gonna wanna unscrew. The ones at the top are just for a plastic cover that goes over the top of your controller. So you're gonna unscrew all those, take them out, and then the plastic piece that comes out is going to reveal two more allen screws at the top that you're going to want to take out once you take those out the only thing holding your controller onto the bike are going to be the wires so it's going to be completely freed from the frame next up we're just going to start unhooking the wires the black one and the red one are your power cables so be careful with those you're going to unscrew those and then the green yellow and blue ones can all come out too at the top of your controller are a bunch of communication cables that you're going to have to reach up and unplug. They should pop right out of your harness inside your bike. All right, guys, and that's it. Your X controller is now free, and now we can move on to installing the Nuclear 24F controller. All right, guys, so as far as mounting your 24F controller to your Suron, as far as I know, the controller actually doesn't come with a mount for this bike, at least mine did in anyways. I'm gonna make a proper mount for myself eventually, but how I have it hooked up right now is actually pretty nifty. Inside your bike where your battery sits, there's a little spacer that's meant to keep your battery from moving back and forth with two Allen screws in it. Those go through the bike, and actually you can unscrew your lock nuts on the other side of those screws, and you can place the controller on those screws and then put the lock nuts back on them and screw the controller back up together. How I did that is I used needle nose pliers to hold on to the lock nut and then I screwed it in with my Allen wrench from the other side because it is kind of a tight squeeze. It is only holding the controller on through the top and through those two Allen screws, but it's pretty sturdy in my opinion and it'll do for now until I can get something else figured out. And it's in a nice position on the bike. All right guys, next we can start wiring the controller up to the motor. I used the same Allen screws that I took out of the Suron X controller to do this. I did have to run to the hardware store and buy five lock nuts to hook onto the back of the Allen screws once I got them all wired up, but that was no big deal. As far as what you're going to hook up to what, the power cables are the red and black ones. You're going to go red to red, black to black, and then the three blue cables are going to hook up to your green, blue, and yellow cables onto your motor. And then after you got all those hooked up, you're going to hook up your communications cable to your motor as well. Alright guys, next up I'm going to take some black electrical tape and wrap up all the connections just for extra protection and then we should be good to go. After I got done wrapping the wires, I went ahead and put the bash plate back up and screwed it on to make sure all the wires fit in there nicely. I ended up putting that little black cover back on as well just because it covered the wires a little bit better than it did just with the bash plate. Alright guys, we can start hooking up our screen now. We're going to go to the top of the bike and on the top of your steering tube there is a little cap that you're going to unscrew. The controller comes with a different cap that you're going to screw in that same place and it has a little mount on the top where you're going to mount your screen. Next you can feed your wire through your fork. 
All right, guys, the next part is going to be a little bit tricky. I'm going to have to splice my throttle wire into a new connector so I can plug it into the back of my screen. I have my brake sensors, kickstand sensor, my spillover switch, and my horn all disconnected. So the only thing I'm going to be worrying about is my throttle. Now, to my knowledge, this controller usually ships with the throttle with the right connector to go into the back of the monitor. Mine, however, did not, so I had to splice the wire. So if any of you guys have to do this, hopefully this will help you guys a little bit. Suran Shop did an awesome job explaining this to me, so... Definitely hit them up if this isn't making sense to you. And then once you got your throttle all wired up, go ahead and screw the screen onto that little mount. All right guys, now that we got our throttle hooked up and our screen's mounted, everything is ready to go. So we can go ahead and flip on our breaker to make sure everything's working. We can see our throttle's working. Shows um, our voltage and amp hour usages. All right guys, so you got it all hooked up. Everything's working fine. Uh, power's going through, your throttle's working now. Um, if you buy this controller from the Suron shop, they are based in uh, Russia. So when I got the controller and I plugged it in, the whole thing was in Russian, which it's not anymore. Let you know how to change that. So like when you go back here, this will all be in Russian. So it was really confusing at first because you couldn't, you couldn't see anything. Um, basically, you have to update your controller and turn it into the English language. I'm gonna put a link down in the description where you can download the software update that you need. And you're gonna have to put it on, I just used a 32 gigabyte memory card. Um, downloaded that, the instructions are on the website when you click on the link, you have to reformat it. And then you can plug that memory card into the side of your controller here. And once you have your memory card in, I can show you how to um, update your software. So we're on the home screen right now. Um, you're going to click back and then we're going to go down to uh, devices, thermal nuclear controller, and we're going to go down twice to update and settings. Um, and then we're going to click the down button, which will bring you down to the very bottom. Update firmware, turn this, it comes over here then turn it to on and then click the green button that'll update your firmware um, after that we're going to click back and then we're going to click the very top one just that and then click we're going to go all the way to the bottom which is just one click on the left blue one and then one more one more and that is going to be update software you're going to click on that and then when you have your card in you just click the green again it'll update and then uh, just let it do its thing <clears throat> and then it should be in english not too big of a deal it just was a little confusing because when you get the bike you plug it in you're like oh shoot everything's in russian all right guys well that's the end of the video i hope you guys found this helpful and i'll see you in the next one